Hey gang, welcome back to East Bjorn's Nav Station and to the second edition of On The Wind Live. Uh, I write these intros, so if you're watching this on YouTube version, hello, uh, I'm not going to be looking at the camera but reading on my computer. Like I said last week, it's a goal of mine in 2019 to record more podcasts in person and likewise to film them. And this one with Luke and Jesse happened to be in a very cool setting aboard their Yal Desiree here in Lagos. The interviews are so much more fun to do in person, and the conversations are more natural, and it's just a nice way to spend an afternoon with like-minded sailors. As I record this, it's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, and the day before, the crew arrived for our first passage of 2019 down to Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. Mia and I are just wrapping up the last-minute items on the boat's checklist, and we're going to take the afternoon and the evening off to celebrate the new year, hopefully with some bubbles, uh, maybe a walk on the beach. Anyway, uh, there are still a few spots left to sail with 59 North on either East Bjorn or Ice Bear next year. So check out 59-north.com slash offshore to sign on to sail with us. And like I said before, I really hope you guys will sign on to the 48. We've got some awesome people running the boat next year. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a great experience. So please sign on to sail with us and you can find all that on the website. We, uh, we hope to see you on the high seas one day. And in the meantime, hold fast. And it's cheer up me lads, let your hearts never fail For the body ship the diamond goes a-fishing for the whale And it's cheer up You're listening to On The Wind, my podcast about offshore sailing. I'm your host, Andy Shell. Jesse Zevelkink and Luke Yeats were on the podcast back in October 2017, right after they'd crossed the Atlantic in their 37-foot yawl, Desiree. Mia and I caught up with them in person aboard their boat in Lagos, Portugal, as we were getting Eastburn ready to cross the Atlantic. We sat in their cockpit as the sun went down, hearing stories of their dramatic knockdown off Cape St. Vincent, their six weeks rebuilding their rudder here in Lagos, life as a married couple, congratulations guys, and what their future plans are as sailors. Jesse is also a professional portrait photographer and came by Eastbjorn later to photograph Mia and I, so check out her work in the show notes. Okay, the setting is Lagos, Portugal. We are on SY Desiree. It is my father's 37-foot Pearson Invicta that we brought over from Michigan. It's sunny, it's warm, it's happy hour. We're hanging out with Andy and Mia in the cockpit. And um, we just got launched yesterday, so it could be pouring rain right now and we would be really happy. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, it's kind of funny because we didn't expect to see you guys here. I know. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Good uh, so I guess Skull. do you want to yeah. start? The last time we had you guys on the podcast was, I realized it was only last year. It feels like it was a it long was a year and time half ago. ago. It was well, boat show, yeah, like October. So just over a year ago. Was it ago. really only a year ago? Yeah. It wasn't two years, years ago? No. I thought yeah, it was two year years ago too, but no, it's only a year, it's and a a year ago. ago. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was a year ago. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, do you want to kind of give the story about why you've been in the boat, sh boat yard for so long? And we'll just kind of start with that story and then we'll just see where this goes. Well, Jess is a skipper, so she can explain the circumstances, <laughs> I think. <laughs> It's such a heavy question right off the bat, Andy. I don't mean, <laughs> yeah, we got to go build up to this. No, man, we got to. You've already been in. We've Woo! already done the build up. People can listen to the previous episode. <laughs> um, okay, if I could give you like an elevator pitch on it, and then we can maybe go into sure. more depth later. Um, but since we last spoke, we had when we first spoke, Luke and I had sailed from Michigan to England. We went on kind of a mission to sail from my house to his house. It worked. We got married. Went back to work for a while, came back bon to the dia. boats to sail down here <laughs> to Lagos. And it was about a thousand miles. We did England to Galicia, Spain, stopped in uh, Viviero, Rio Viviero, and A Coruña, which was fantastic. Then we had one more, like 450 mile run from Galicia down to Lagos. And um, this was mid April 2017, so just, just this last spring. And it, we had a pretty rough go, to be honest. It wasn't um, my favorite sailing I've ever done. It was, it was kind of tough. We were just, you know, you know how double handing goes. Um, was that the Biscay passage? The Biscay was okay, okay, actually. It wasn't nice, but it was okay. Because that's the one everybody's scared about. It was manageable. Um, yeah, I've done Biscay plenty of times, and uh, it it's always, shit. it's always difficult. <laughs> but um, 
We tried to slingshot the back edge of a low pressure that slammed into like bare it sort of area. So we came down with quite a good, you know, following wind and everything was pretty good until yeah. the second load came and we got shoved into Viviero. Um, which was a great stop. Yeah, which we enjoyed perfect, it. Perfect, we yeah. octopus for four days. Yeah, and we were hoping to just get sneak around the corner yeah. and head on. Did you back. catch your own octopus? No. Because no. Ryan and I Sophie, wish we were that cool. Ryan and Sophie were trying to catch an octopus here, and I, I don't know. Could you like you have? Okay, I now you know. catch it. How I do you freaking know. kill it? Like I Jesus. Know. I think it's yeah, good to eat. You, you just got to spear them, I guess. I yeah. think that's the idea. Yeah. But anyway, take sorry. them home alive. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our last run from Spain to Lagos, Portugal, we were planning to haul the boat out in the boatyard here anyways, and just about 40 miles around the corner, um, there's Cape São Vicente and Sagres, which you're both mm -hmm. familiar with. Yeah, southwest tip of Portugal. Yeah, we were about eight miles offshore just inside the shipping lane, and um, the waves really started to stack up there. We had, the wind was okay, actually. We had 35 to 45 for 24 hours straight, we were downwind, hauling ass, at this point, um, almost bare pole, less than the third reef. And Yeah, um, we had a squall of, what, 50, yeah. 50 knots. Yeah. And, oh, this uh, is supposed to be an elevator yeah. pitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The podcast yeah. is long format. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. That's what these stories are good for. See, I knew, I knew you'd go straight All in. All I have to say it's okay. is one it's a, way. It's a 22-story building, so yeah. we've got time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really yeah. slow elevator as well. There's <laughs> some guy at the bottom just like... <laughs> so, um, Take Luke and time. I... <laughs> We're in Hong I... Kong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Luke and I experienced our first knockdown off of Portugal here and um, it ripped off our dodger and detached our rudder from the post, um, dislodged our stairs, floorboards on the ceiling, um, I mean you name it the list goes on and on, bent our stanchions and um, um, oh you went for a swim? I went for a swim. I remember reading you posted something about it on Instagram yep. and it was all very dramatic. Yep. I had tethered in about 30 minutes before it happened actually. Jesus. And it was just, it was very quick and it was very violent and we came back up, you know, it was um, seconds, mm. talking seconds, yeah. that's all it was. I mean, I just opened my eyes underwater and a few seconds later, I'm crawling back into the boat. Um, and we were able to, over after pumping out the bilge and making sure we were okay and the rig was intact, etc., we were able to get back on course and pretty much With the hydrogen. bear pole it around the corner with yeah. again like less than a barely did you know it was going to be bad weather yeah we, we did. yeah we were expecting yeah. bad weather and there was a forecast we for like 35 winds. to 40 knots yeah but this boat doesn't really come alive until sort of 25 plus mm. so she's in her element it was it really. was your typical situation of the forecast was stuff we felt confident handling yeah, stuff sure. that we had been in before and yeah. thought like, okay, the boat did great, the boat did better than us, you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it was it was the stacking of the waves and how they were apparently breaking. And the one that broke over us just came from, of course, a different direction than the pattern that we had so for it's, over So it's the classic hours. story that everybody kind of says, everything yes. was fine until it wasn't. Um, well, sure. I listened to, yeah. um, I don't remember the guy's name, I wish I did for a reference, but I listened to a podcast you did with a gentleman recently and he was telling his story about his knockdown and he had his stanchions flattened. Who was, do you remember who that I, was? I don't remember. That's the, the um, my secret on the podcast is I'm not really listening. <laughs> <laughs> You're concentrating uh, on you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your voice sounds great, Andy, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, he, the way he described the situation, the violence, the quickness of it, and the come back mm -hmm. up, and, and the process that he went through afterwards, it was incredibly relatable. It, I wish I could have described it actually as eloquently as he did, but we did not have our stanchions flattened. We had some other things happen, but, but it was just... So if amazing. I can summarize the, the non-Hong Kong elevator pitch, yep. you guys got yeah. knocked down and the rudder broke off its post, yep. and yep. you've been here for the last six weeks building a new rudder. Yep. Yeah. Thank there you. Yeah. <laughs> See, I really Boom. knew the story. Really really tied <laughs> that's it that's all a one story together. building elevator pitch, yeah. I guess, uh, I mean, I'm always interested in knowing what you guys would have done, if anything, differently in hindsight. I mean, we talk about it every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Um, we write, we, he wrote down so much stuff after we got back. Yeah, there was quite a few things. And I guess um, one of the big problems I have is being relatively tall. Getting in here with both the washboards in is pretty tough. 
So to go downstairs to do navigation, I tend to leave one washboard out. Um, when we went over, we that was actually out. so much water in the boat. <clears throat> um, a second knockdown like that would have been so over the batteries folks. for wow, sure. Wow, really? Yeah. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, um, maybe I just need to do more yoga or Pretzel something. Pretzel a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. It is hard the, with all your gear this, on now. We were over here earlier today, and this boat's similar vintage as Arcturus. Yeah, similar no. size, same keel centerboard. And we didn't have this big bridge deck here, so yeah. we actually, for the Atlantic crossing, siliconed in the lower two, I think one or two washboards just for that oh. very reason. We never yeah. actually needed it, but we just yeah. permanently kept it in there yeah. Yeah, for that wise. reason. Yeah, I think with two washboards in as we were and the mm -hmm. companion way shut, then we yeah. would have hardly got any water downstairs. Yeah. Um, as we went over, this was in the water. Oh man. Wow. So, so, so it was literally just <laughs> flooding in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, Jesse went for a swim. And the thing that was interesting, we um, took the companion way off when we got into the boatyard uh, just um, to fix some of this stuff that broke and during the knockdown and there was coins under there coins <laughs> really? that came from a pot which were down oh by the chart table really yeah can't have loads you of coins know yeah. it's like no. a tin of it's like a canned uh, pie oh I can't um, get it yeah you can, you can get it well, you can get it later yeah. you're, you're yeah, wired yeah, yeah. in now you're yeah. stuck yeah you're stuck <laughs> it's a, um, it's but a yeah. pie in a tin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's made in uh, Brazil, and they seem to be really popular in England, but they're great for <laughs> on a boat. You can just, you know, heat up the oven, chuck this tin in there, and then there's this pie that... They're know, pretty good, actually. Yeah, very puff cheap. pastry <laughs> and salty. It sounds great. very British. Yeah. It's very, but yeah, it's very, yeah, super British, yeah. It's yeah. super unhealthy, yeah. <laughs> um, but this pie was in one of the little lockers downstairs, and... Um, just from the force of it moving from one side to, of the locker to the other, it dented this can like this. Wow. Um, and we but actually donated it to an English guy up here who's a vegetarian, so we'll we never eat it. We donated but him. And yeah, a mushroom, dozen eggs unscathed. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I know, That's it's awesome. so random, yeah. Wow, that is totally yeah. random. Yeah. So were um, you, the, the coins everywhere. The obvious yeah. question, were you guys scared at all during this? Of course. In the moment, were you scared or were you just shocked? I wasn't scared. Actually, that's that's. You funny. went for a swim. You must have been. <laughs> I was um, trembling. I have a video. I took a I took a brief video about thirty minutes after it happened, and um, you could absolutely hear it in my voice. Yeah. I mean, was I operating functioning? Yes. You know, you have the conversation of stress, fear, fear, and how it all how it all breaks down when you're actually in that moment. Um, I held it together. We, you know, it was like business. We yeah. just took care of shit. Hmm. But we got to the entrance of the marina and we dropped the hook. We were done. It was sunny. It was a beautiful, beautiful morning the next morning. As soon as we dropped the anchor, I just sat in the cockpit and opened a bottle of wine and started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought you were gone. Oh, I didn't wow. see you. <laughs> but in the moment, you just deal with it. You just deal yeah. with it, don't you? And, and my only thought, I mean, I remember having this thought when I went in the water was I'm in the water and I need to get out hmm. you know it wasn't um I'm dying or you was know, it the tether just, that just was it the tether that yeah. that did it we were yeah. both sitting here on the you starboard went through side the, through the guardrails yep I went over the top of the wheel and landed on the combing here we switched I places think. yes we managed to switch places somehow you were here or I was there but we were connected to the jack yeah, line jack, here. And the boat went on that, that way. way. Yeah. yeah, boat went yeah. that way, yeah. Yeah. Um, and somehow as the boat came up, you kind of got Hold sluiced back on. back on board. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was scared afterwards. Mm. Um, but yeah. I remember seeing the, the your headlamp Me on too. whilst we were under the water. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Is like, it green? Oh. It's weird how you remember those green details bubbles. like yeah, yeah, that, yeah, isn't just, it? Because like, like you said, it was probably green. a few seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you remember you remember a headlamp. Yeah, for a few seconds, yeah. Were you scared? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, actually, I wasn't scared at the moment because there's too much going on. Mm. Um, fixing the boat up and trying to sort everything out, I wasn't scared. But what I was really scared of, and absolutely shitting myself, and it's very rare that I do that, was <laughs> the next wave, 
waiting for the if next there was one. Another mm-hmm. one. Yeah, if you there had was, that like anxiety yeah, of, yeah. of the, where's yeah. where's the next one coming from? And, we both and so sat like back. just the uh, just the wave breaking like twenty feet away. <gasps> oh yeah. yeah. We yeah. had um, in my pants. just to <laughs> build really pump, random. your standard <laughs> build pump normally. handle fits in the hydro vein. Mm-hmm. We don't have one long enough because our back stays in the way. Right. So you literally sit there and drive the whole boat like a dinghy. You so, know, and so you're driving on the so hydro vein. So we took 15 minute yeah. shifts wow. driving the hydro vein. <laughs> I mean, luckily, <laughs> coming in to warm you were up fairly close though at that point. Yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah. That took was lucky. another six hours. So rewinding it all the way back, we talked about this before. You know, you're replacing the rudder now, which yeah. which broke. It sounds like the yeah. boat handled everything else more or less Did. in one piece. Yeah, the boat yeah. was totally fine. And, and I don't think yeah. it, you know, it wasn't the wave that broke the rudder. It was the rudder being 50-some years old. Yeah. And just probably yeah. should have been replaced anyway. Probably, yeah. Yes. I mean. <laughs> but um, I'm, not, I'm not blaming you. It's not, yeah. it's not no, what I mean. No, no, but it's no, just you're ab- you're to, to identify right. the cause the of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. the wave yeah. didn't break it. Um, it's Jesse's dad's boat. And um, that rudder's been on there for a long it's time. It's his fault. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but he was like, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's bolted through here and, you know, it'll all be good. I mean, Jesse are looking at it like, mm, mm. Mm. <laughs> No, we maybe, did actively not. choose to not redo the rudder. Though. And we did the yeah. same on Arcturus. That yep. was the only yeah. piece yeah. of equipment we yeah. didn't refit before yeah. the trip because we were like, ah, oh, we'll roll the dice. And you know what? I mean, I'm impressed it made it across the Atlantic, to be honest. And yeah. I would have loved to have uh, broken just before we got to England, as opposed to just before Portugal. Mm. Why? Because it would have been so much easier to do it in to England. To fix it in England. <laughs> yeah. 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 All your friends, you know. tools. Well, sure. And yeah. here it's like a little bit manana. And but it's dry and sunny. Well, sure. <laughs> we were, yeah, but you probably have an indoor I mean, shop in England too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. With a heater. <laughs> yeah, we were when we left you guys earlier, me and I were walking out to the beach and just thinking like, it actually feels like the time does go slower in Portugal. There's yeah. something about in does. the air. It's just like yeah. everything moves at the a slower pace. The time feels yeah. slower, but for some reason the hours pass faster, and that is very contradicting. <laughs> Every day yeah. the hours are passing, and the whole day is full, and I've done you know one project. It's even funny. We walked over to the dive shop to talk to those guys. They were oh, over good. there, yeah. and they didn't even remember. They're, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you cleaned our boat. They're like, no. no. Ooh, uh, really? I, oh, that, was, that was ages yeah. ago. One guy was like, yeah, maybe I was the one who was over there. I think it's maybe. Like, guys, it maybe. was like it was like four weeks ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, Sometimes, yeah, well, you know, okay. another sailing couple came and yeah, yeah. That's so funny. I, I guess um, I didn't really know where I wanted to go with this with this conversation, but I mean that's a pretty dramatic story. But it obviously started with a bang. Obviously, hasn't stopped you guys from from no. pushing forward with your plans. No, of course not. Um, no. So. We've rebuilt the rudder we've made a better rudder i think um something that fits the hull and it's made out of mahogany faced with plywood sheep with glass so it's kind of traditional in some ways mm. um it's built like a brick shit house um that's an english term i don't know what you guys it's it's, it, we, it's, it's familiar it's the same thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> What yeah, you uh, get, you what drop it off a bridge? Where do you get the skill to even attempt to do that on your own? I mean, I know um, you had the boatyard do some welding for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, interesting enough, there's nothing on YouTube about how to build a rudder, yeah. a wooden rudder for yeah. a, for a thirty-seven foot yacht. You've checked. Um, yeah, I did. I did. I did just out of interest. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, it was interesting. I was just, um, you know, considering what's the best, um, you know, wooden joint to join two pieces of mahogany together. And, um, you know, we went for a rabbit joint, which is super simple. Just cut two pieces out, join it together. That um, stops the mahogany from um, having too much uh, width across the grain so it can't bend. And uh, just a little bit more glue surface area, um, but still remaining flat. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the only thing. But there's no there's no YouTube tutorial about mm-hmm. how to build a wooden rudder for a 37 foot yacht. <laughs> and you've motored it around from the boatyard now, so you haven't yeah. yet sailed it. No. But I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be <laughs> fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I cool. think the rudder would be nicer. It's um, it's um, a narrower cord, mm-hmm. um, and longer. So the old one was a bit of a barn door. Yeah. Um. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. Fingers crossed. Mia, you had a good question that you were going to ask earlier. I'm going to put you on the spot now because I don't remember what it was. (laughs) 
I don't remember. <laughs> it was something about about like we were talking about being naive and going across the Atlantic by that northern route, and it was something well, along yeah, those lines. Yeah, because we did the same trip as you guys did, like kind of as our first big trip going yes. the northern route and I think yeah. in hindsight it was a pretty big attempt as a first trip ambitious yeah do you guys feel anything about that I do very much but I don't have another transatlantic to compare that to yet yeah. um, based off of just conversations I've had um, people we were engaged we wanted to get married <laughs> so we needed a proper Ultimate test, test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were messing that was around. that was it yeah. But I do think that it was pretty, it was damn gung-ho of yeah. us to just say, and, and we decided very quickly, and we prepped the boat and you know, in a timely manner. We said, we're sailing from Michigan to England, this is the way we're going. And which we're way did you go, just months. to remind people? Um, uh, from Lake Michigan, out the Great Lakes, uh, Welland Canal, St. Lawrence Seaway, Montreal, Quebec City, and then up to a little island called Ile de Madeleine, um, Quebec, it's mm -hmm. Quebec. And then St. Uh, Pierre. Pierre. Saint, yeah, yeah, that's where we were. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys left we took from off from Saint there. Pierre. We left from St. Okay, Pierre. So we went up to St. John's, yep. then Conception Bay, and, and finished our stuff up in Newfoundland, which we loved. I want. I can't wait to go back. Yeah, we're going yeah. back this year, actually. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's beautiful, really cool place. beautiful. Yeah. Nicest people yeah. I've ever met. So then Newfoundland to England, and then England to here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I guess, what was, what was your question based on that? No, basically just like... It was a pretty big trip to be the yeah. first one, and that's what we were reflecting on. Would you have done it differently in hindsight? Yeah. No. When we left England, Luke was like, it'll, oh, it'll get warmer, <laughs> days will get longer, it to be all downwind. Sailing, in my personal opinion, as, as a, I'm a very new ocean sailor. This is not something I've been doing for years and years and years. I've had one ocean under my belt, <laughs> and um, England to Portugal. And England to Portugal, for me personally, was 10 times harder than crossing the ocean. Hmm. Yeah. I had a very hard time with it. Um, it didn't make me In what sense? Do hard, it again. hard time in what sense? Um, there was such a consistency with the ocean and with the trade winds, and I didn't feel like I could sit for 30 minutes without having to reef or unreef or do change something, address the steering vane. And, and you know that sounds kind of silly to me, just for me to say because that's sailing, isn't it? And you know you should understand that's what you're signing up but for. But sometimes you actually can sit for days. But yeah, uh, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, going back to the original question, you know, it was kind of an ambitious trip to go Newfoundland to England. Well, you know, was it cold, rainy, and cloudy? Yeah, it wasn't that stunning in the, in the middle out there. <laughs> um, but I mean, uh, there was we were on the same tack for days, yeah. mm -hmm. just fine-tuning the hydro vein little tweak here I mean I read books and books so there was there was a relaxing element to it even though it was weather you know as far as <coughs> as far as um, any sunshine <laughs> it was just raining well, all no, the time no ships no Brittany yeah. to oh, yeah, crash were, into yeah, no yeah. Finisterre yeah. to crash into yeah you were just really no continental alone, shelf. You know? and coming yeah. down here it was so lots of traffic and I'm yeah. I'm still lots gaining lot uh, no. 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 no lots of fog on the North Atlantic but yeah. um, none coming down here and I'm I'm still working on my I'm surprised that you I'm surprised yeah. that you, you say know? that because, you know, icebergs scare me. Um, ships scare you. Yeah. But they don't scare me. But they make you worried. Whereas in... Um, I'm not as confident. I was never but confident in an iceberg. I think it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> tension. You're I'm tense shitting myself you can, when we're in an iceberg ships, alley. <laughs> you know, we've got AIS. We know where ships you are. You can see icebergs. Well, <laughs> apart from when you don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You don't have radar. But <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect spot. I, I think we all need a refill on the wine. Yes. And the camera's about to shut off. So Dino we'll take Verde. a tiny break here. And then we'll, uh, we'll re good. get going here. Deal. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, Mia, do you want to start the second part of this by describing you've... I've actually not done this next crossing. You have. Yeah. And uh, I think you can kind of give us a, a rundown on what to expect because you had a pretty nice one last time you did this in 2012? Well, 13. 13, 13 yeah. in January. Pretty much the same time. We set off in the beginning of January to, to from the Canaries to... We were going to St. Lucia, but we ended up in the BVI. Yeah. But uh, we had... Went south until the butter melted, and then we turned... <laughs> To the Caribbean, and we it's were true. pretty much on the same tack yeah. with 15 to 20 behind us the whole way. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was <laughs> for 20 days, right? For 20, yeah, it took us 20 days. Yeah. It was crazy. Wow. Wow. So yeah. I have wow. high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so, Luke, I'm sure you've talked about this in the first episode, but like I said, I don't really listen to these. So, what, what <laughs> have you done a lot so of ocean, ocean sailing? No, I mean, it's so 
What? It is true. I'm just because you when I'm when I'm interviewing you, I'm only I'm only listening enough know, to course. steer the conversation. Yeah, of course. Of but I'm course. not actually yeah, yeah. absorbing anything, yeah. and I don't normally go back and listen to them. So <laughs> I, I actually mean of, that that I'm not really listening. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening, yeah. but not yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. You're no, listening to no. figure out the next question. Exactly. Yeah. Listening, but not that interested. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So anyway, so yeah. what? Uh, hang on. You've got this. Oh my! Backwards. My beaver's upside down. There we go. That's good. My Cover mini beavers. Up the girls. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> All right. Cool. So what? So what? What's your ocean sailing experience? Um, uh, well, I only one one transatlantic before yep. me and Jesse did it um, on a Swan 55, five crew. So easy, just. Which way? The, the trade wind, the um, way back, or no? We came from as uh, South Carolina. Okay. Um, up the coast, and then we actually ended up going to the Azores. Yeah. And then across, yeah. So, I consider that like not a not a really sailor crossing more of a Why? delivery crossing oh yeah okay yeah if you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. not beat the boat up too much or yeah. blah 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 yeah. uh which it was a delivery crossing but yeah. um yeah so was that one of the old like the old sns 55s yeah those are cool SNS. man yeah, we yeah, looked yeah. at and yeah. actually yeah. looked at them we have a swing keel as well <laughs> oh yeah i wouldn't want that version <laughs> no <but laughs> yeah but no they're, they're really they're sometimes. really cool boats yeah it was, it was a fantastic mm -hmm. boat um yeah. And um, it had a fridge and <laughs> a nice maker. There was a washing machine on board, oh, and there was five people. So yeah, it was just so easy, like cool. super, super simple. So I think the that obvious, the obvious question, yeah. I think <clears throat> to people that are going to listen to this is, you guys are what, 29 and 34? Did we mm -hmm. establish? Mm -hmm. I'm the yeah. oldie in the bunch here, almost I'm 35. The baby. <laughs> how do you pay for all this? How do you, how do you make this lifestyle Great work? Because that's what everybody wants to know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well. I well, it didn't sell my yacht yet, but it's trying. Uh, I <laughs> gave trying up. Yeah, sell his boat. <laughs> gave up uh, my job. Had some money. Yeah, uh, took that to America. So obviously, I was married to uh, Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, I worked on a cherry farm. Yep. I built some fences. A fence, yep. A big fence. A fence. <laughs> yeah. Offense. A fence. A fence. Um, it's called the it's called the Great Wall of Northport. Actually, if you've ever been to Northport, it's like a tiny town in. Northern Michigan, yeah. and um, yeah, it's a big fence around. Anyway, um, <laughs> we we thinking about you, you did know, landscaping, sending something into Donald Trump for the Mexico oh, Wall. Sweet yeah. lords. <laughs> now, the mon now the money's approved. Oh wow, well, this is podcast it? Is, is about approved? sailing. Remember? <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyway, forget enough about the Great Wall of Northport. Um, um, and some landscaping and just you know general jobs. So just whatever, um, basically, yeah. is the answer. And then, to that. and then selling sails to the local guys, local sailors mm. in Northport Marina. So. You sell a basic set of sails, new set of sails to one guy, <clears throat> and they all race on Saturdays. And uh, then the next guy says, well, actually, he's beating me now, so I want the next best thing you've got. And then it builds and builds and builds, and this guy he says, I need carbon sails for Saturday racing around the bay. He's like, no, you don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, you save your money. So, oh, but, you got hired too to... Um, oh, do some skippering skip, yeah. Yeah, 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 around yeah. and stuff. So, about jobs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually more profitable um, than having in my nine to five job yeah. in um, <laughs> Hamble doing selling yeah. sales. I've always said it's it's not about what when you want to do a, live a lifestyle like this. It's not about what you're making. It's what you're not spending. Yeah, I think is yes, the key. Yes, right? and we're able so in it to kind of tie it all together. We're able to live on my father's property. There we have a little studio loft apartment that um, is just above a garage and. It's, it has my name on it and my things in it, and it's just where I come and go. It's been home for me for the last, I don't know. Well, it's been my permanent address for like 10 years, even though I am constantly coming and going. Yeah. But it's a wonderful little place that um, keeps things for us very flexible. We don't own a home. We don't have any debt. Um, so our bills are very small. Yeah. Um, and then I do, this is year going on year four for me for wedding photography okay so I do photography in Michigan or wherever the job brings me from June through October um, and I've just actively chosen to only be hireable for those months and then I say this is where I'm gonna be elsewhere if there's an opportunity I'll jump all over it um, so otherwise I just I kind of switch roles what is it weddings kids and pets and anything it's really like, but yeah. yeah but those are like the three yeah, that people <laughs> spend a stupid people, amount of money people for people are obsessed yeah. with their yeah. babies they are obsessed with their pets and they're obsessed with their significant other and they, they you know they pay well for it yeah and i never would have thought um i would i've always been interested in photography it's been my passion since high school 
I never thought I would call myself a wedding photographer, but why? Um, I, d- it, I wasn't interested because it didn't... Well, it's kind it of cliché, isn't it? Yeah. If you're an artist, it yes. feels like it's below you. wedding photographer. It, it yeah. did <laughs> until I started doing it. And now I have a great respect for it. And I actually really enjoy it. It's very rewarding. What, why do you have a respect for it? In what uh, sense? Because it's, it's difficult. Yeah. You know? It is. And it's <laughs> and so... And the stakes are freaking high, so right? It's so yeah. much more... Well, it's like herding cats, right? It's so much more than just taking the pictures. You mm. know, there's months and months of um, consultation that goes into a day that is this person's these people's most important day of their lives and then and then being the able to law. deliver this <laughs> what feels like it feels like I'm delivering gifts all the time you yeah. know when I send them the link mm. to their photos I'm like Merry Christmas happy yeah. birthday you know like it feels so good to be able to to give them their photos and just hear good feedback and but yeah it's everything you shoot is even if it's wedding after wedding after wedding, they're all so different. So before, if 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 you originally thought that was like ah, I don't want to do that, what what if you wanted to do photography, what would have been the ideal? Oh gosh, you know every other cliche <laughs> photographer's dream: National <laughs> Geographic. Mm. You know, hire me to travel and do <laughs> kind of more lifestyle stuff. Um, I, I do love portraiture though. And I do have a knack Stop. for... Just Ben's going to be so happy that his head's in the <laughs> Ben. We, re- we yeah. recently named our Compass Housing Ben. Ben, ben like yeah. That. He's like a yeah. little bit bold and his head's a little bit shiny. <laughs> we polish this. And Very nice Australian We've just man. named him Ben. Ben. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Everything like has to have names on the boat. Very nice yeah. bold Australian What were we Austrian talking man. about? That was a good call on your part, Mia. What, what were we, we were talking about We were talking photography. about photography. I was going to ask you... Yeah. What was it going to be? You said the lifestyle stuff. My next question was going to be. Oh yeah. You had, you guys have done at least a couple articles. I saw your yachting yeah. world article. So like, I mean. And you too. Congrats! You've had some good ones. How does that feel though? To one. have your stuff like that's kind of that's like the photography that you're most passionate about. It's your own stuff, right? It is. So is it? How does it feel when you get that stuff published? Uh, really good. Except when you are the creator, you're always disappointed by your own work. You know, so you're always wanting it to be better. Anytime I've ever seen any of my photos published, I look at it, I'm like, mm, it doesn't, looks like crap. Do you go back and like <laughs> re-edit old photos you've taken in that same vein, stuff that sometimes, hasn't been published? Sometimes, hmm. you know, like something that, um, photos digitally, because of the backlight of your laptop, they look spectacular, yeah. the clarity of your laptop. Yep. You know, they just, they look so good. Um, it's hard to even find a good printer where you can mm. get a print that looks as quality as you're going to see it on And then digitally. magazines, they're not and the best paper. And then magazines, depending yeah. on the magazine. Mm. Um, and a lot of times it's someone else's photo selection. Like I recently mm. had a spread in a local wedding magazine back home and I looked at it and I was sad. <laughs> 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 I just thought, really? They, out, of, out of 600 photos, like those are the ones they chose? Mm. But I'm very selective with with photos in general and yeah. what, which ones I choose to share and which ones I think yeah. are interesting. Um, but that's just my... You're, you're I, fussy. I am fussy. Yeah, I'm You fussy. should be. Yeah. So Luke, what, <laughs> what, what, what did you want to be? What, what do you want to be? A firefighter? Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I you wanted be? to be a rudder builder. That's what I've always <laughs> wanted to be. Dreams have got, I, dreams my dream has come, come true. true. Exactly. Look at that. And a, and a compass uh, housing <laughs> polisher. Um, I've nailed it. Yeah. Well I'm, I'm, I'm here. Well I've made it. There's one thing that's very certain that I've heard you say one too many times is that I want to die at sea. That's a great dream. Well, That'll likely happen. <laughs> Probably. At well, your rate. Hopefully. You're taking yeah. this really dark now. I, I know. Go there. <laughs> yeah. She's going to throw me overboard on the next He said the day. He was crossing. dead serious. <laughs> dead serious. He said, oh. I want to die at sea. I said, you want to? Oh. Well, um, I've just had a few friends who, over time, they get old and then they have a heart attack whilst they're sitting in their boat or something, you know, and I just think, that's a great way to go. <laughs> that's a great way to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But not, not like not like next week, like when you're no. nice and old. Yeah, and no, not in a car crash or yeah. anything I like that. I didn't mean it that dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so she's going to push me overboard, I think. That but was you, not so a career goal, though. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, what do you want? To, we still haven't answered what you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> um, well, there's no question, uh, no answer to that, is there, really? I mean, who knows? But, like, what, how do you guys, how do you view the future in, in general, like, philosophically, as you go mm. forward? How, how, how far ahead do you think and plan? Um, well, I think it's pretty much one day at a time, or maybe one <laughs> month at a time. <laughs> really, That's at awesome. the moment. Yeah. <laughs> It's, um, it's fairly fluid right now. Um, I'm quite lucky on the, the basis that I can sell sales wherever I go, and um, that's really useful. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, mu- pretty much about it for me right now. 
I think yeah. ideally, you know, from from shorter picture to larger picture, um, being able to work for ourselves, you being able to work for yourself, selling sales independently, which you're already doing and which mm. is fantastic. So digging into that a little bit more and there's certainly family in the future, you know, so being a father or being a mother and continuing to sail and doing yeah. the whole boat baby on the boat thing. And yeah. He'll be yeah. the homeschooler, you know, I'll be the <laughs> sailor, he'll be inside. Stay at home like, dad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you got the cat already, so you're you're one yeah. step in the yeah. way there. Unfortunately, the cat hates me. <laughs> the cat doesn't cat hate likes you. cat mum. Doesn't like me at mm. all. Yeah. Are you the one picking up the cat? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Mia, Every time I go to touch her, she's like, <laughs> runs away. Mm. Oh. Mia and I have kind of, because like, we, we talk about having kids all the time, and I've talked about it on the podcast a lot. Like, Yeah, yeah, I've heard some of that. Because we're, I mean, I'm like, we're not too old to have kids, but we're also not getting any younger <laughs> not getting any younger yeah <laughs> and we ask ourselves you know we spent the last year asking like how's your what's your kid meter today between zero and 100 where is that oh, that's and a good question but it's, what's your it's kid just meter? it's been sinking lately huh. yeah. because i think part of the problem for us is that you know people say oh you don't have to change your lifestyle if you have kids and and people like you don't oh, but you do but you do but, but you, you, do. you do to an extent but, but we do it in yeah. a more very specific way we yeah. can no longer work together if yeah. we have kids we physically cannot be both on the boat because yeah. we can't bring a kid along on the boat in the with the business we have right right stuff. because your well, personal yeah. and business uh, they're yeah, kind yeah, of you're, you're intermingled you're yeah. and the screaming kid yeah. Yeah. and it's not fair to stash away to grandparents for three months at a time either right. <laughs> it's not really so we've really yeah. i think um, yeah. by the way if you guys do decide to have kids hopefully they look more like me than you <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that luke <laughs> cool. Jeez. You know. it's okay you, you you're never listening actually, remember you're never that's remembering right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a I actually, sense i actually memory. hope they look more like me than me also <laughs> so that's fair enough no yeah, but i mean the same as well <laughs> <laughs> apart from this bit i know i haven't been beating her up by the way oh. Drop the Lazarus hatch in your head yeah, yeah lock ahead you lock can ahead. see it now when i yeah, sit yeah, closer it's very to big you bump. it's gonna yeah. get blue tomorrow lock mm. ahead yeah <laughs> Anyways, Where were we here? This is going question. off the rails now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a hard question, Andy, I will say, because we're both, um, we've never been huge future planners yeah. at all. And that's one thing we figured out about each other very soon when we met. Just, you know, you only think, I usually only think about a month in ahead, yeah. two months in ahead, or a few months. Um, since I started doing wedding photography, then I started having to switch gears and you promise to, yeah. a person that I will be there on this day in this location in a year and a half. Mm. And to me, that was, that kind of commitment was completely overwhelming yeah because i didn't know how to do that i decided to start doing it but it was hard to yeah. do um and then i learned that i was perfectly capable of doing that and then i could just take x amount of time off but yeah ideally i think staying flexible um and as detached from um payments hmm. as we can yeah. and uh, you know i think separating work at least for me separating work and personal life is kind of important mm. and sailing for me is very personal and is not business at all um for you you've been in the marine industry your whole life yeah. so you can inter you can kind mesh of. them very the, well the problem is, whereas um, i'm two different people what i mm. what i suffer from is um you know someone's like hey i've got a problem with my seacocks or i've got a problem with my my hull i need to you know patch up a hole or something and um i'll be like yeah i'll do that and then i'll spend three days four days <laughs> and i charge nothing yeah and i'm just like oh shit could have <laughs> yeah could it should have, have been yeah right yeah, yeah, or, yeah you yeah, know yeah. whatever it is yeah. it is a challenge because you want to like you're, you want to help your sailing community exactly but that's at why the we're same all here time, we all help you know, each other yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you're you want to be a part of that community but at the same yeah. time if you're also trying to be a professional those things don't it's they hard. Don't, don't always yeah. mix. Yeah. Because you can't even add up the amount of times someone has helped you. And you're, I can't no. add up the amount of times someone has helped us. Whether it yeah, was likewise. loaning me mm. a loaf of bread or down in the engine, you know, figuring out our stuffing yeah. box. Whatever it may be. There's been so many people that have helped out that it, it initially feels wrong to charge. Slow down, man. Yeah. Fuck. Wanker. Yeah. I think they're not even going to give <laughs> us any fish. <laughs> Come that's okay. On. That's on there. Yeah, that's on there. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah it, feels, it feels weird to charge because you've been, ha yeah. I know for me, like I just, I literally have this thing that comes up on my phone every morning at 9 a.m. and it says pay it forward. It also says work harder and be nice. But pay it forward is like one of those things 
that yeah. you know when you're helped so many times at sea at the dock you know the whole boat community but that. I think you can I think you can have it both ways I yeah. think you can too but it's easy for you as a line to be a photographer at the weddings and then you do that and, and then, then I you switch yeah. yes yeah. yes I switch and, and if I I'm going to do favors I'm doing favors it's not to get anything back I think we had a fair to. trade with most people in the boat yard so yeah. we had um, Dick um, Dutch guy sails across the Atlantic single-handed this year. It's boats in the yard. The, the nice guy with the glisten in his yeah, eye. Yeah, the spark yeah. in the eye guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, he had a couple Digging of holes cheeky. in his boat that he needed, you know, five glassing in. So I did those, and um, then he's like, "Well, just use the bikes whenever you want." Hmm. So fixed his bikes. He fixed well, some other people's seacocks. He fixed some other bikes. Yeah. Yeah, sure, but <laughs> yeah. you know, everything's been for. A, you know everything that I've needed to build the rudder, basically. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, I can borrow your planer. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Here's some plywood, or but that's know. just how it goes, you know. Yeah. So you on the even, I'm breaking. You, yeah. it's, it's trading. It's not. Yeah. You know, that's there's no, yeah. There's no yeah. catch. It's and plus, I think trade. It's I think the way I see it, like you're currency, yeah. you're in the capacity of you're in that community now because you have a problem yourself. So you're sort of that's that's the hat you're wearing, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Versus totally. if you're just here on your own and have some time to kill and want to do some work well then then you're up front i'm doing work now i'm gonna get paid for this yeah. Yeah. i think that's yeah. okay to separate those things i mean how uh, long yeah, I think so. how long did it take for you guys to figure out that you could make something you love into a business because that obviously requires a lot of strategy and thought it and actually it was it was the <laughs> only <laughs> thing. Yeah. no it was the only thing that i ever wanted to do yeah. there was there was no plan that b was it. that we was did it a, we yeah. did a test run the first time to do just paid yeah. expenses for one trip, and yeah. then we started charging, and said either it's gonna work or it's not. We didn't do like a, we didn't face in. So sure, we, we like kind of did like occur. a, yeah, we yeah. just did yeah. straight away. Yeah. I mean, and I always and it works and yeah. it's working. I always wanted. To and now you have a second boat. Uh, well, we don't own it yet, but soon. I want to hear more about <laughs> that. So, um, how much are we charging the cat to come along? Yeah. How much are we charging <laughs> them to interview us? Yeah, good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're not getting yeah. off the boat. Uh, so. How many 25 50 euros each? That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> no, but that was an easy question for me. It was, yeah. it was a foregone conclusion. They did yeah. bring two Because I think so many too. people spend, and, and we're still working it out. I mean, we've been lucky the last few beers few beers <laughs> last few years with flexibility you know, and being able to save up you know and then yeah. we budget for six months and, yeah. and we and I envy that can. I mean it's it, it is really cool because we don't get Mia and I don't get to sail just the two of us right we choose so that's not changed. to we do at, at, at times last year we didn't allow ourselves any time between trips because of being in the Arctic and everything yeah. this year we have at least a week between every trip good um, and good. part of the reason we're getting the bigger boat is because we figure we're living on the boat seven months out of the year. We might as well have a little bit more space for yes. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we can take more cool. crew and that stuff. So, I, I mean, I think too, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like, I, I mean, I honestly don't feel like I, I am, me and I joke a lot. I am the most productive, lazy person you've ever met <laughs> because I have no problem working like really, really, head. really hard. <laughs> I'd be a terrible pothead. I'll so tell you. Would I. <laughs> we both would be. But uh, no, I, I I have no problem working really, really hard if it's something that doesn't feel like work, because then it's not yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. But I yes. hate, I freaking hate, the daily I hate grind work. Or, I yeah. hate yeah. working. Yeah. I yeah. hate working. Yeah. Yeah. So if it doesn't, feel that, that I'd have to trick myself into it not feeling like work, yeah. and then and, that, and what and we that's do, I mean, key. it's basically what we would do if we wouldn't work. We would go sailing with our friends, so and now we have question. people coming sailing would with us. Would you rebuild your own macerator <laughs> that was, you know, jammed with a tampon, <laughs> or would you buy a new one? <laughs> All right, so I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna give a long answer to this question. <laughs> Did you guys have to do this recently? We had set. We have a lot Couple of good head stories. Head I think stories. Everyone does. Everybody's got head stories. Did you have to like kick stories. everyone off the boat? Yeah, yeah we we yeah. made a poop cannon. I've never told that story <laughs> in the podcast oh, yes. before. I think we yes. told you guys. Uh, told yeah. you about oh, the poop cannon in, the, um, in do you Ireland. Know whose poop it was? In the um, it wasn't mine. <laughs> Don't share you, the story. You, you did it in the. Um, was it Mia's? No. In the talk in Annapolis. Yeah, you're right. I did mention yes, that. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, yeah. I'm not going to get into that now. But to yeah, answer okay. your question, <laughs> I, I've to 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 zoom out a little bit. Would you bit. consider that work? Absolutely. And okay. what I've what I've done over the years, because we have a business now that is fully functioning and and generating income and stuff, I've we've done e we've done everything, everything, yeah. every project you can Just imagine. Part of we've it. done it ourselves. Yeah. But now we're to the point now where we can go. we we can afford to pay people to do stuff that I. I look at it, not stuff that I don't want to do. It, that's true. I don't want to do it. 
but it's more <laughs> how can things. I be more efficient because I can go write an article, I can spend more time on the podcast that yeah. generates its own yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. going forward. Or you so could spend a whole day replacing a mass, a mass Exactly. <laughs> so I, I've, I've looked at it that way. There's some high level projects that, that I can, that if I do myself, I'm saving money on that I'll do if I enjoy doing it. I love doing rigging work and, and well, sort of engineering Andy, you've stuff. you've got it right because I'm still at the point where I'd rebuild the mass rate. <laughs> yeah. no, so t- the short answer, I'm, not, you, I'm gonna pay you to rebuild that mass rate. Put it there that you way. go. No, I'm not Put rebuilding your mass rate. <laughs> you got a new job. But I think uh, that's how I've justified it anyway. Yeah. I, I have to admit, I am a little bit embarrassed to say that, that now I'd rather pay somebody else to do the dirty but work. But I've done all the no, fucking dirty work. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you've different too. To that it's fair different too, like if we have an off season and can actually because like the Svalbard trip we worked we didn't we had in six months with four days to ourselves so yeah. we valued then the off season to go home and spend some time and just relax and have a few products done in the yard here yeah. rather but than no, but, and but, but in we the, didn't get the yard to do it we no. hired Nick to do yeah. it and he's yeah, a guy that I'd rather true. pay Nick he's yeah. awesome, yeah. and yeah. support him and his lifestyle yeah. he yeah. works as a carpenter yeah, that's yeah, his yeah. thing yeah. 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 I, we can that's the pay yes. it forward yeah. thing yeah. Yes. I can afford yeah. to pay him I don't like doing that work I can't I, I don't I can't do it to the level that he does it anyway yeah. Yeah. so why not make the circle go I mean that's well, um, that's economics right there right if I was going to rebuild a mass racer after the first time I would actually go to the local bar here Hustle a few games of pool, get a couple hundred euros, and buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you would you pull that off. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But I mean, the thing is, if it's in, in fact, season that's the event and you have no option, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. Yeah, or if you're out in Spal <laughs> Bar. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say it. If you're Spall up in bar. the Arctic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no pool tables up there. No. I can't earn any money. I think, I, I think to <laughs> no put this in the, in the big picture, what I've talked about before, I don't think enough people, um, you know, we've sitting here watching boats go by. I, don't, I think there's too many people, I should say, um, that wait until they're retired, have a lot of money, and wait spend a lot of money, and don't and hire learn. Everybody. But don't learn the yes. stuff. You have to put that, like, that's basic seamanship yeah, at some yeah, level, yeah. is it learning is, yeah. about that stuff. Yeah. From the beginning, the fundamentals, and like, yeah, okay, if you do it initially and then can afford later to pay somebody else to fix it, that's fine. But um, I think at some point you need you to learn, learn by that. your mistakes, don't you? Yeah. What was your Every mistake day. the other day? Oh, do you guys want to learn my most recent mistake? Let's hear it. So, well, it goes back so far. It well, goes it back mostly to, to do with the rudder. So we put the rudder post in. The quadrant and then the crooked. quadrant was all crooked. Oh, anyway, I love we, this story. This is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we sorted everything out, and Jesse wanted to check out the throttle and the shifter. So she decided to turn the engine on one last no, time. No, no, you missed all of it. So I spent an <laughs> well, entire we're doing day. An elevator shift here. An, yeah. an entire day. <laughs> the quadrant's shaped like this, right? Like yeah. does this. And our shift and throttle cables go through the quadrant. So to remove the quadrant, which I had to find out if this thing was bent because it was not lining up on the stoppers. It's sitting like this. So I was like, the only way I can really figure this out, I just gotta take it out and go look at it. So to do that, I had to disconnect the shift cable cable and throttle cable. Take it out things perfectly straight I'm like oh fuck so then I spend the whole next afternoon reconnecting the cables and you know these things are so simple in theory but the you can't reach anything yeah. right and then every other tool you drop in the bilge and then you can't buy them here because it's metric not imperial and the list goes on and on so you know this afternoon project turns into like a week-long project I finally get the cables connected back to the engine and um, wanted to run it to make sure that the throttle was starting at a low rpm that i didn't connect it in a way that like we were going to start it up and it was going to go so i connected the hose to the intake this is the third time we've started the engine this way and just turn the hose on in the time frame (laughs) that i turned the hose on it was a fairly high pressurized hose turned the hose on got up started the engine before the engine even started there was water coming out the exhaust and somewhere in that process which I still don't really understand till this moment. <laughs> we think water got back through All one of the, the valves. All the water went back into the oil. Oh. Yeah. This is not the story I thought you were telling, oh, by the way. Yeah, yeah wow. so like milky oil. And so oh. just before I come the day down before we and basically launch, like, the water, <laughs> the oil is like boiling, because it's full of water. Yeah. So it's like boiling out the sump on the top or oh the vent God. on the top. It's like spurting out of the dipstick thing and it's gray. And I'm like, I can't count how many times I've looked at this oil, changed this oil, and I've never seen gray oil. And so I'm like, <laughs> Milky. And this was, you know, 
two days before we were supposed to launch. And I'm thinking, oh no, what did I do? What did I do? Anyway, so I had to change the oil three times the other day. And it's just... It's very... not the gasket. We think it went back through one of the exhaust valves. Yeah. Probably into yeah. the... And the um, block, but didn't I'm blow physically the gasket, not so cool. quite long enough to change the oil by myself because you can't fit anything yeah, down yeah. there. So you have to like rig up some vice grips and this tin that fits Ugh. perfectly and do a handstand. <laughs> and then the build's just full of oil. Anyways, it's it's a pain in the ass to do once. We need to do an to oil do change. Three more times. We're going to wait until crew get here because that's one of those teachable moments. <laughs> <laughs> it is teachable moments. It is. They love it. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is yeah. great. Yeah. So, lesson learned, learn from your own mistakes, so, is don't start your engine with a pressurized hose. Do it from a bucket with a short hose. Oh, you were on land when you yes, did this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sh- okay, yes. I get it now. Yes. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Oh, so, it wasn't shit. sucking up water. There was, was water being pushed water. through. Yeah. Oh, yes. wow. That's actually, I, and that would, never I don't think I would have thought of that. Mind. I thought well, they were yeah. completely separate We think it systems. might have gone back down the exhaust into yeah, one yeah. of the valves. On oh, one of the I was cylinders, very, maybe. very angry with myself. So didn't yeah. the story I thought you were going to tell? Didn't you also connect the steering cables such that the rudder turned opposite when you turned no, the wheel? No, but that's a great story. Who, was that? Who did that? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody that's recently hilarious. had a steering cable <laughs> thing where they connected the steering cables and turned the wheel, and the rudder went opposite because they hadn't crossed the cables like you're supposed you're to. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was you guys. I thought that's no. where you yeah, were going. No, with no, 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 that's, that's a good story, good. though. That, that is, is yeah. a great story. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, at least we didn't make that fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did that for you. So after. I know um, we got a few minutes left. I want to ask a couple final questions here. Ooh, um, are they going to be serious? No. Uh, <laughs> you can make them serious if you want. <laughs> What's the name of your cat? Tato. <laughs> Potato, <laughs> as in potato. As in as potato, because it has a chip out of its ear. Maybe we should introduce it. Oh, a chip. Oh, clever. Yeah, chip. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, you, you said you, you, don't, you guys aren't good at planning too far into the future, so I guess mm-hmm. I- in the immediate future, what is the immediate plan? We're, I mean, we're not going to see uh, you guys pending in Pending cat days. passport, Morocco. Yeah. Um, maybe Madeira. Yeah. If Morocco is not on the case. One or the other, depending on wind and cat papers. Yeah. Mm. Um... Madeira is kind of hard to get out of. Canaries. Canaries for sure. Caribbean. And then yeah. back to Michigan. Do you know yep. where in the Caribbean you're gonna? Uh, no. Probably northerly, mm. northish. Yeah, yeah, we're, God, we're not gonna so, go too far south. That's so refreshing to me. I mean, you and Mia and I know through the end of 2020 exactly where, where gonna we're gonna go? be and yeah. the dates yeah. and everything. Wow. <laughs> and it's like wow. really refreshing to say, yeah, maybe Morocco, maybe Madeira. I don't really know yet. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I wish some Wherever the wind go. is gonna take yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. This boat is great um, on a beam reach, on a board reach, mm. downwind, um, kind of on a fetch, but any beating mitt. Okay. Um, That's good yeah. for the people too. I mean, yeah. no one likes to go up when Well, no. yeah, sure. <laughs> so um, might as well have a boat that yeah. likes the same. Gentlemen yeah. only sail downwind. Right. But the boat's um, going back to Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. The boat is being returned to Michigan, and then yeah. we'll start the find our own boat process, and we'll probably start all over again. What's your dream boat? Sweet 55. Oh, I knew you were going to say Remus that. Canute design, 1960s, fiberglass like boat, 55 foot long, but it's only as wide as this. That might have been the quickest yeah. answer to that question I've <laughs> ever gotten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think I finished asking yeah. the question. You've put a lot of thought into this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. You should look it up. Sweet 55, Canute Reavers. Um, he only built 15 of them. Well, there's only 15 ever built. They I've had a few Canute Reavers designs before. Uh, Scary Cruisers, um, he designed a lot of those. I had a 15 square meter, 22 square meter. Um, both of them awesome boats. Wood, cool. but this yeah. one would be five glass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have time to ask one question. You got two minutes. Two Ooh. minutes. Go. Uh, I want to ask you, since you don't cruise in with a fridge, a lot of people oh, think yeah. that's very strange. We did oh, the yeah. same thing for a few years. We're on our so cruise. used to it. Um, Afro so carob beans or whatever they're called. What are they Garbanzo called? beans, corn, those, those peas, things. avocados. Oh, yeah. The El, um, there's Afro, these. Afro, Afro brass. Afro. I don't know. We have these new little, I don't know. We we're just so used to it. We I don't, go yeah. get one for the we don't even think twice about it, to yeah. be honest. Can I do that? Yeah, yeah. You can, you can disconnect. But hurry up, because the camera's going to be over in a minute and a half. Oh, go, <laughs> go, go. Yeah. But the bottom line is, you're, you're, it's not you don't really think a about thing, it. right? It doesn't no. even seem to be it's an not, inconvenience. It's not an issue. Yeah. But we have not taken this anywhere hot yet. That's... Yep. Yeah. And I'm... Yeah, that might be a game changer. Everywhere we've been um, has been relatively cold. for snacks. Oh, they're so now, good. Now, watch out yeah. for the seeds. You can just eat that. Mm-hmm. They're, really <laughs> they're super good. They they're taste really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They're, you can buy like a pound of them for like 50 cents. Watch out for the seeds. Mm, I got one. Yeah. You can crack your teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they are. Just strong. careful not to mm. the seeds. Oh. It tastes like um, those tamarind fruits mm. almost. Mm. They're much yeah, chewier than they like, look. Yeah, it's a little bit like dates, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that must be in the date. We're pre- getting pretty good with like one pot. This one is going to sound meals. great mm. on the audio. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. Bye. Um, last question. Mm-hmm. Who do you think I should interview next on the podcast? Grace and Emily. Oh. Yes. You're no longer on the mic, so take it from her. Oh, shit. Yeah. Take me as. Take me as. There is. Uh, what about um, Charles of Wind, Andrew? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He or used ben to play and for the, Well, they're not here. I don't know. I don't know. I say Grace and Emily because they're two young women, best friends, 23 years old, and they just did the Great Loop in a year on a little Columbia 29. And they've been writing some articles, and they're just were they a inspired by you? They were, cool. yes. And they're such awesome. a pleasure. They're such and a they pleasure. Made it? They made it. Yep, yep. They awesome. did it, and uh, one of them is now working on a charter boat down in Grenada, and the other one's finishing their masters in New York City. And it's just so nice to see. And they did young it in women half the time, out there sailing. Half the time they you did, did it because they're racing sailors. All right, we did it. Yeah. High did five, it. everybody! Woo-hoo. Thank you, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, bros. It's our hard seats. It's like beats. bring out the wine, baby. On the Wind is produced by 59 Degrees North and hosted by Andy Schell. August Sandberg helps with the filmed version of the show, and both he and Lee Cumberland help produce the audio show when Andy and I are at sea. Sophie Darcy of Ryan and Sophie Sailing on YouTube has been a big help in setting up our YouTube channel for the filmed version of the show. The show notes have become a group effort and are written mostly by Ben Sufer, previously by Liz Karamavros, and sometimes by me, Mia Carlson. Cameron Dale composed and performs the intro music to the show. And the Stormweather Shanty Choir are behind the outro music. Make sure to listen to episode number 252 with Hakan Vatle to hear about the history of the band and sea shanties in general. Subscribe to On The Wind on iTunes, Google Podcast, and your favorite Codpast app. Uh, you can help us out and support the show by simply leaving a review on iTunes, or better yet, telling your friends you can also donate cash money cash money homie right (laughs) you can also donate cash money via patreon.com slash on the wind or directly to us just click the big blue fund button at on the wind.co finally a huge thanks to all of you who listen email your comments and interview suggestions or just say hello to holdfast at 59-north.com. We read and reply to every email. Don't you worry. Until next time, hold fast. We'll have a cracking time But when I awoke it was no joke I found I was all alone My silver watch and my money too and my whole bloody gear was gone. Was gone, was gone. My whole bloody gear was gone. It was when I awoke, it was no joke, for my whole bloody gear was gone. As I was walking down the street, I met Big Rapper Brown I asked him if he would take me in And he looked at me with a frown He said Last time you was paid off with me You took up no score But I'll take your advance and I'll give you a chance to go and to see once more. Once more, once more, to go to see once more. I'll take your advance and I'll give you a chance.